Today I'm going to talk about ESET and why it's my preferred security solution for Windows, Mac, Linux, as well as Android. Nickel knows tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nickel knows tech, number one channel with the news on deck. And when you're shopping for an antivirus solution online, you're most likely going to search for best antivirus 2022, 2021, and you're going to find a whole bunch of websites that have a top five or top 10, and the, all the big players are going to be there, the usual suspects, Norton, McAfee, Bitdefender, and, and everyone else there that are always in the top 10. Problem is, is the guys in the top are not necessarily the best, and you know it because you've even had a friend that had Norton McAfee and then they have ransomware the next week. So I decided to show you my recommendation as well as why. Now, like I said at the beginning, we're gonna be looking at ESET, particularly internet security. There are different tiers which have less and more than what we're gonna talk about, but I'll show you the differences. First thing that I like about ESET is the clean, sleek interface, okay? We're at home, but if we go to computer scan, this is where the NOD32, the award-winning security scanner that's in all ESET products, really shines. If you don't want to do anything except scan your computer, which I'll do this in a hurry, especially if I think there's some kind of threat on my system, I'll click scan my computer and it'll just start working. If I want to get more info, I can look down here. I can even open up the scan window and look at all the details, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this scan, dismiss it. Under advanced scans, this is where ESET's NOT32 really shines. There's actually a threat that a lot of antivirus companies don't even acknowledge as far as existing, and it's called a UEFI firmware rootkit or a motherboard infection. There's a lot of people are paranoid. They think whenever they have something that's persistent, they think they have a motherboard infection and they don't. They are very rare, but they do exist. ESET's malware, um, <clears throat> malware researchers did identify some that they are in the wild, so they are possible, but no other scanners actually scan for in the UEFI for these rootkits. It'll also scan the memory, of course, the registry, and then you can just scan particular drives. For example, I have several drives. I don't want to scan all my network drives and all my SSDs. I want to just go here, I can scan that. I can also just scan a particular folder. For example, if I just want to scan my downloads. <clears throat> you can also do it through the Windows Explorer. If you go to Downloads, and I want to scan this Trojan slash win. I can right click and scan with internet security. This one has whack attack in it, so it might not be detected by ESET because this is a variant that we're playing with and modified, so it shouldn't have a signature yet. ESET has one of the highest detection rates of any of the other scanners. I don't care what the awards say if one, if they say Norton or McAfee is the best. I'm going to lay it down to you, Norton and McAfee and a lot of big name players, they buy those awards and they are pretty much for sale. Over in the setup section, you can see a lot of the features of this product. Under the computer protection tab, we can see that there's real time file system protection. That means things that are going on in the background on the file system are actively being checked by the engine. It doesn't slow down your system, even though there is a gamer mode to minimize the notifications you may be getting so that you can game in peace. It doesn't slow down your system. It's very lightweight. And under here, you can check all the system features. You have cloud-based protection. During setup, you're gonna get asked if you wanna participate in this. You always should say yes, because anytime there's a new signature developed on the other side of the world, it gets up to the cloud, and then your system can now detect it. So very important, very awesome technology. Under malware scans, you have a lot of different things you can change. You can have it uh, scan removable media. So if you insert a suspicious flash drive, it's gonna scan it before it executes anything, before it runs any INF files, any auto runs. So that's a really good feature. Document protection, this is pr pretty good because a lot of PDFs and Windows uh, Microsoft Office documents are often infected. And in fact, that's the most common way that a YouTuber will get infected is with a bogus PDF or a bogus Word doc, which is actually an infection. HIPS or Host Intrusion Protection System is a literally that it, it detects intrusions on the system and most people use these at the network level at the router which filters all traffic and tries to intercept a hacker or an ARP poisoning attack and other types of of hacker attacks at the host level this is going to wait until it's decrypted on the system very important because um, in the in the cybersec side of the, of the table, we know that IPS doesn't work on encrypted traffic. So HTTPS, SSL encrypted, VPN traffic, which most modern infections are encrypted, you have to do something at the host level. So once it's decrypted at the host level, it can now be intercepted by a host level intrusion protection system. I hope you're still with me. 
Right now, Big Tech is collecting data on everything you do online and building a profile on you for financial gain, and you don't see a penny of it. Take back your privacy and take back control over your connected life by using a reliable VPN. Unsecure websites and public Wi-Fi are the easiest ways hackers can wreak havoc in your lives. But if you have NordVPN with its military-grade encryption, lightning-fast speed, and over 5,000 servers worldwide, you can browse safely and privately. NordVPN also has state-of-the-art, dedicated peer-to-peer -peer servers to protect your usage from your ISP, as well as Big Brother and with advanced obfuscation servers, you can access blocked websites or even streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, and more anywhere in the world. NordVPN has a strict no-logs policy and has never and will never be pressured by governments. Take back your privacy today and use my exclusive link in the description to get a huge discount on NordVPN. Stay safe. Next feature is webcam protection. If you ever wonder why every employee at Facebook has a piece of tape over their webcam, it's because this is a real world threat. A a hacker or a rat or other types of spying types of malware can easily flip on your webcam and start looking at what what you're doing and looking at your house and seriously invading your privacy. What webcam protection does is it makes any type of activation of the webcam first have to go through ESET. So if you have a new application that uses your webcam, ESET's going to ask you, hey, is it okay if this application uses your webcam? If you say yes, it will be allowed from now on. It's very nice protection. It also has a microphone protection feature so that it can't just turn on the mic and listen to what's going on in the room. Under the internet protection section, we have web access protection. This is going to block malicious websites that are trying to infect you or they're trying to fish you and scam you. It's going to try to protect you from that. These two tabs here is protecting your email clients such as Thunderbird or Microsoft Outlook and trying to protect you from needless spam and malicious uh, emails. Under network protection, we have some more advanced features. We have a hardened firewall, attack protection, botnet protection, and you can actually configure these. If you're IT savvy or you're tech savvy or you're a student of cybersecurity, then this will be right up your alley. Under the firewall section, we can configure the different features such as rules. I already have a couple rules here. I'm blocking 135 through 138 just to block file sharing over SMB that is not authorized by ESET. And then there are allowed services. You can get very specific. You can block RPC. You can allow a remote desktop. If you don't have any remote desktop, you can go ahead and block that. Now no one can remote desktop into your computer because it's blocked in the firewall. The whole RDP protocol is blocked. But you can go in through and do a whole lot of stuff. Now, under botnet protection, you don't have to mess with this. Under IDS, this is another form of similar to IPS, but it's IDS. It's going to alert you to any type of intruders, and then uh, you can make a firewall change based on that information. We also, of course, have brute force attack protection. Uh, what brute force is if someone's trying to connect to a password protected feature on your computer, such as file sharing, and they're trying to try every password in the book, um, just trying hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of passwords to try and guess your password, it's going to detect that and block that and also alert you. We also have, of course, packet inspection. Um, I'm not going to get too techy into what this is, but it's identifying traffic coming into your computer, looking for anything suspicious, and it can also identify type of traffic and you can filter it out. So if you don't want old school SMB, old file sharing protocols, you can go ahead and block that. <clears throat> you can block different types of communication. But even if you don't know anything about this, as it is, it is very hardened right out of the box without having to tweak anything. So just setting it up, turning it on, it's already very hardened and good enough to protect you from most threats, unless you're in an extremely um, high risk environment where you're obviously in IT or you have an IT department where these things can be tweaked down to uh, the advanced levels. Now as a bonus, under the tools section, you have several things here. First, I'm going to show you the network inspector. This will show you all of the, the things that are on your network, all of the clients, um, any computers you have, any other smart devices, TVs, anything that's on your network. It's going to show you what's there. So if you see something that shouldn't be there, hey, that's something to look at. Maybe your Wi-Fi has been compromised. Under the scan your network, this is something where you can get advanced. You don't have to know a whole lot, but it's going to test your router if it's vulnerable to certain types of attacks like common threats. But you don't want to do this scan on a public network. If you're using this on a laptop and you're connected to someone's Wi-Fi or a public Wi-Fi, don't run this scan because you will get detected as being a hacker um, because it is going to try a couple of things without causing damage. But 
on public networks and even like my network, I have an IPS at the router level, which is scanning for this type of attack. And if you do that, it's going to alert that you're doing that. And if there's someone actively monitoring that, you might get accused of being a hacker or you'll probably just get automatically blocked from that network and not allowed to use the Wi-Fi because it's going to see you as a threat and automatically block you. Another thing under the tools is, of course, you have banking and payment protection, anti-theft, which you can mess with. Under the more tools section, we have a system inspector, which you can do to create your system and it'll see if it can tweak anything. I don't really use this a whole lot, but it's nice to have there. And then under the quarantine, you can see anything that you've detected. System cleaner, this will be similar to Sea Cleaner, but not so intrusive. You can schedule tasks, you can schedule scans, you can schedule network scans. And over here, network connections, you can see basically what's like TCP view, where you can see all the active connections that your computer is communicating out to the internet. Running processes, this is going to do a slightly more advanced version of task manager, so you can see everything that's going on in your system. Security report to see how your computer is doing. And then ESET Live Rescue, this is a link that's going to take you to ESET's free uh, bootable uh, rescue disk. This will let you do some basic uh, tweaks to the system. You, if your system won't boot and you need to rescue it or it has an infection and you have to boot to it, you can create your own USB drive. You can boot to this Linux-based, easy-to-use rescue disk, which also has ESET's online, online scanner. So you can do some basic things to try and fix your computer. So it's nice because it's free. Now if you follow the link in the description, you can see there's three versions for home users. We have Nod32 Antivirus, which is all of the scan features here, scan your computer, and then our setup, it'll have the, the internet protection here. So it's gonna do that, but it's not gonna have all the advanced features such as network security, IPS, and all the advanced anti-hacker and network attack prevention um, features. You'll find that on internet security, which is the one that I use and the one that I recommend as a minimum. Smart security is everything that internet security is, but it also also has um, encryption so you can encrypt all your files and password protect them. I use BitLocker so that's not a feature that I need. It also has password management and so you can manage all your passwords so you don't have to type them in and they're all securely locked within ESET. I don't use it because I use NordPass but if that's something that could be a benefit to you maybe consider smart security. But what I demonstrate today is internet security and it's $49.99. And congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Hope you found this helpful. If you'd like to pick up this product and get it the link in description. If you like this video, please click like and consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and I'll see you next time.